Lord God, thy great thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a great joy and privilege once again, beloved and friends, to be here this night uh, to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord that everyone is in good health uh, and happiness uh, regardless of our situation in the world. As I always say, Jesus says in his words, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of this world. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that great, my friends? Isn't that mighty that we have an assurance that God promised to be with us in every situation, in every circumstances, in every trial, in every testing, in every tribulation, in every storm, and every decision making. He promised us, he says in his words, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but no evil shall befall thee and no plague shall come by thy belly. Let's give a big hand to us. Welcome to my, my friends and beloved and family and relatives, those who are listening to me tonight uh, from your living room, from your dining room, from your kitchen, from your car, from your office, uh, on the street with your phone in church, uh, or right here. God bless you richly. I release a blessing sincerely from my heart tonight, uh, and I pray that God will bless you uh, physically, spiritually, uh, socially, materially, financially, educationally, every in your life. I pray that God will bless you and prosper you. Let me break it down. I pray that God will bless your homes. God will bless, bless your marriage. God will bless your children. God will bless your finances. God will bless your business. God will bless you and give you a promotion on the job. And whatever you do, it shall prosper in Jesus' precious and gracious and wonderful name. Amen. Let's give him a big hand tonight. My friends and beloved, I cover you under the precious blood of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus is so efficacious. And the blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus is is a repellent that destroys every yoke and every bondage and every fetter and every evil and every work of darkness. Yes, every spirit of witchcraft, phobia, the demonic forces, evil blights, generational curses. Whether first, second, or third, or fourth generational curses, I break in the name of Jesus. I break every chain. I break every barrier. I break every fetter. I break every evil and every work of darkness. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. You are free tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, you're free. I cover you under the precious blood and I build a hedge around your life. Yes, I cover you you under the blood of Jesus, for the blood is so efficacious and the blood is so powerful tonight. I repeat that tonight, my friends, because God loves you, but a thief commit, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Christ comes that you might have life and life more abundantly. God wants you to have abundant life. He wants you to walk in divine health and happiness and prosperity and satisfaction. But my friends and beloved and family and relatives tonight, uh, the devil is a liar. That stupid devil, uh, the thief comet, he wants to kill and destroy. He wants to rob you of your true peace uh, and joy and happiness. Uh, but my friends tonight, uh, I'm here to tell you the first covenant uh, God made with man was the covenant of healing. For he was wounded uh, for our transgressions. Uh, he was bruised uh, for our iniquities, uh, the chastisement of our peace. Uh, was upon him and with his stripes I am healed. You are healed. We are healed. In Jesus' name, let's give him a big hand. Yes, I want to introduce you tonight. Those who are sick tonight, I'm here to introduce you to the healing God. Jesus Christ is the healer. Yes, because he took all four sins. He was beaten with 39 stripes upon his back, my friends, and he died in our place that we might have life and life in abundance. Yes, don't let the devil rob you tonight. And those tonight of you who are sick unto death and you have no hope tonight. 
Your family have, have, have given up on you. Yeah, the doctors have given you a bill, a report uh, that you will not live. You will die. But tonight uh, I have good news. Not bad news, but good news for you. That you will not die. You will live. You will live to fulfill purpose and calling and destiny. Because God has not finished with you as yet. Yes, there is work yet to be done. Yes, and right now I feel in my spirit realm, the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit is burning out that cancer and that sickness in your body. Yes, there is some other sickness unto death in your body that that disease has been burning out right now in the name of Jesus. And when you go back to the doctors tomorrow, they will find no trace of sickness because you will be completely healed. You will be completely healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's give him a big hand to my friends, to my, my friends. If you're suffering from cancer, if you have cancer, if you have AIDS, you have COVID, you have diabetes, RSV, you have a, you have a liver problem, a lungs problem, a heart problem, a blood issue, a blood dialysis problem. What is your illness? What is your sickness tonight, my friends? I'm here to introduce you to the healer. Jesus Christ is the healing God. Yes, he is the healing God. My friends, tonight, if you're blind, you're deaf, you're dumb, you're lame. You are in the right place. You are in the right channel. You are right here online tonight. Yes, God will touch you and heal you. If you're suffering from oppression, depression, frustration, yes, all depression tonight. If you're suffering from anxiety, God will touch you and heal you. If you're demon possessed tonight, and those demons are ripping you apart, are tearing you apart, yes, those demons demons are having her harassing you there is no rest and there is no peace for your soul tonight is your night for a miracle demons tremble at the name of Jesus yes demons flee at the name of Jesus and demons bow at the name of Jesus and right now those demons are trembling right now and in a few seconds yes they will leave in a few minutes they will leave your body in Jesus name because no demon can enter your body Body and remain there under the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. Demons have to go, so you will have sweet night rest tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's give him a big hand tonight. Yes, my friends, if you are if you're going insane tonight and you don't have a son, a good mind tonight, if you're losing your mind, you're insane person, yes, and it says you have given a, a mad suffocate. I'm here to tell you tonight, God gonna touch you and heal you from that mental sickness. Yes, you be completely healed. God will restore your memory bank. God will restore your memory. God will touch your brains and heal your brains and you will have full sanity and sound mind and a strong and healthy body tonight because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's give him a hand tonight. In the name of Jesus, we restore him a healing and mighty God. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is victory in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. You will be healed. You will be saved. You will be delivered. You will be set free tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now I feel a tremendous anointing this night in this room tonight. That the anointing of God. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send for the anointing. I know the word of God says we as preachers and ministers must lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But my friends tonight, God is no respect of persons. There is no barrier. There is no distance. There is no limit to God's power tonight. And right now I'm going to send for the anointing. All you need is a little faith as a grain of mustard seed. And if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you 
shall say to the mountains, Be thou removed and cast henceforth into the sea, and it will obey tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you ready for the healing miracle hands of God tonight? Are you ready to receive that miracle tonight in the name of Jesus? Right now, I'm going to send for that anointing. Right now, be healed. Of Jesus, he said, Free by the power of the Holy Spirit. I see demons are leaving many people tonight. I see all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease leaving your body. Yes, the lame walking and the blind seeing and the dumb talking. Yes, my friends, that's the power of God, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. You are free tonight. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. That is why the Son of God came up in this earth to set captives free. Yes, God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to set the captives free, to heal the sick, raise the dead, and make the lame walk and blind see and perform the miraculous. Because it's not by might, nor by power, but by the working of the Holy Spirit. Let's give him a big hand in the mighty name of Jesus. My friends, and the Lord, yes, sir. tonight, my friends, it will be very sad if you miss the rapture and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I see in the spirit realm, I always talk about modern day Babylon, that is America, and I always want America to keep in line with God and do the right thing. But God is telling me tonight, because of your disobedience and rebellion and willful sin against God, you will lose your superpower in a few years time you will be second in line and China will be first yes China will triple the economy yes they will have three times your economy in every area in every way they will be more powerful within a few years and America will be second place and I think Russia will end up in the third place my friends yes my friends because of the, of the rebellion and sin against God, willful sin against God. Let me get into the word on the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. My friends, something, something is going to happen in this world very soon, but the believers will not be here. And tonight I want to tell you, do not miss the rapture. Do not miss the rapture. Do not left behind because signs you're going to miss the rapture. I'm going to preach tonight, but I my desire, my heart desire tonight that you will not miss the rapture, the rapture of the church and the great tribulation period are two of the most uh, hofty debate topics uh, in Christian theology. Most Christians who debate uh, these future events, my friends, uh, fall into one of four categories. Uh, tonight they believe that the rapture will take place either before or before during or after, after the great tribulation period. The, uh, the final and fourth group uh, do not even believe uh, there is a rapture the Bible clearly teaches the doctrine of the rapture and the majority of all Bible scholars agree that there is a rapture and the rapture will take place before the great tribulation. Yes, my friends. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 tells us to 18. After that, yes, my friends, we who are still alive are and and left uh, will be caught up together with them in the clouds uh, to meet the Lord God in the air. Yes, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, my friends, tonight uh, encourage one another with these words. The majority of biblical scholars uh, hold the position that the rapture will take place uh, before the great tribulation. One of the reasons tonight uh, is it because the word the word church is extremely prominent. Uh, in the chapters in chapter 2 and 3 of the book of Revelation. However, my friends, tonight uh, the word does not appear until Revelation chapter 22 and verses 16 which says, it also important to note that the church is in direct reference referred to in Revelation chapter 19 verse 7 in the wedding of the Lamb as a wife of the Lamb. Lest most scholars agree that the church is not a participant in the scenes of the tribulation.
Revelation, my friends, which from the major content of the book of Revelation, after careful analysis of the book of Revelation, it quickly becomes more apparent, my friends, that the church as the body of Christ tonight is not the same as the book of Revelation unfolds and the saints who come to know the Lord in the period of the great tribulation are described my friends as saved Israelites or saved Gentiles tonight never by terms which are characteristics of the church my friends the body of Christ those who are left behind will face the great tribulation period to be we are going to look at what uh, what are the warning signs that I'm going to miss the rapture tonight it is a sobering thought tonight uh, that the Bible speaks of people who have a false assurance a false assurance of salvation they are completely convinced yet they should be convinced and warning sign one self-righteousness yes so much self-righteousness the reason why self-righteousness is single number one is because it is a hidden sin tonight my friends it is a sin that a person can be committing and have no idea that they are committing it, committing it. for instance a liar knows they are a liar a fornicator knows 100% they are a fornicator or they have just fornicated a thief knows they are a thief or they know they have just stolen but an individual who is full of self-righteousness tonight topically cannot even tell they are full of self-righteousness my friends and that is the deceptive nature of self-righteousness yes it's not like other signs not a sins at all it is deceptive in its nature like Luke chapter 18 verse 9 through 14 tells us also he spoke he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others two men went up to the temple to pray my friends one a Pharisee and the other tax collector yes the Pharisee stood up and pray thus with himself yes I thank you that I am not like other men the Pharisee says extortioners unjust adulterers or even as this tax collector yes and fast twice a week yes I give tithes of all that I possess and the tax collector standing afar off will not so much as raise his eyebrows to heaven and beat his chest saying God have mercy, have mercy on me, to me a sinner. I tell you this tonight, uh, this man went down to this house uh, and justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself uh, will be humble. And he who humbles himself, uh, my friends, shall, shall be exalted. The tax collector, my friends, uh, left justified because his prayer was full of humility. Yes, my friends, no vanity no self-seeking yes the tax collector knew exactly exactly what he was and what uh, that was an old-fashioned sinner and his prayer was straightforward my friends and full of humility yes god be merciful to me a sinner and if you say that tonight uh, while on the other hand the pharisee was puffed up uh, yes god i thank you that i'm not like other men yes uh, the truth is is tonight my friend isn't hard to have such a high opinion of yourself when you are comparing yourself to other people it often is not difficult to find someone worse than you my friends even the most worst sinner can always find a sinner worse than them yes don't compare yourself to other people who are worse than you compare yourself to the gospel tonight compare yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ yes and you will will, will fall this to the time I agree with Pontius Pilate when he looked at the Lord Jesus Christ and says I find no fault with him 
He is perfect. Yet if we were to examine, if you were to examine your life, could we say about you also, I find no fault with him or I find no fault with her. My friends, the first warning sign you are going to miss the rapture tonight is when you began to see yourself as the Pharisee saw himself. The Pharisee saw himself as better than others. Yes, because of his behavior and his own goodness my friends the Pharisee saw himself at a level where no longer needed the grace and mercy of God quite literally my friends rather than praying this Pharisee was bragging to himself yes in a short prayer he mentioned I I in five times five times he says in that prayer he mentioned himself this man wasn't praying my friends he was bragging to God reminding God how great and how wonderful he is just imagine the the, the adversity yes to go before the Lord and brag about your own goodness my friends this this is what uh, I was saying about the deceptive nature of self-righteousness. Uh, people are self-righteous uh, and don't even realize it today. Just like the Pharisees, uh, he had no idea, my friends, uh, that he was full of pride and self-righteousness. Uh, he was full of pride and self-exaltation. My friends, he was full of pride and self-glorification. My friends, uh, what this parable is convinced tonight is that we are all sinners we are all sinners all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God Almighty to realize this is the first step tonight to salvation my friends to see yourself as you truly are a sinner yes who desperately need Jesus Christ yes my friends he is the reason we will go to heaven tonight he is the reason for our salvation he is the reason for our redemption tonight. Yes, my friends, he is the reason we will be taken in the rapture. Yes, he is the reason we are justified before God. Yes, my friends, but self-righteousness deceives you into thinking it's not about Jesus and it's about you. My friends, this is a sign number one. Yes, tonight if you see with your eyes looking onto anything other than the Lord Jesus Christ you need to examine yourself yes humility will take you a long way with God my friends the second one you are going to miss the rapture is that you deny the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ Satan has no problem with you believing in Jesus Christ as long as it is the wrong Jesus Christ tonight listen carefully Satan wants you to believe in the false Jesus Christ therefore this false Jesus Christ cannot save there is a wave of churches and Christians who deny the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ my friends they believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God but he himself is not God and that is not Jesus of this Bible my friends the spirit of the Antichrist is in the, is the rejection of the deity of Christ. For John chapter 4 verse 3 tells us and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is, this is, this is that spirit of the Antichrist. Therefore if we heard that if it should, that it should come and if now already it, it is in the world my friends have you not seen how the world is trying to be best to remove and reject the deity of Jesus Christ, my friends. The world accepts that a person called Jesus live on this earth, but the world rejects that he is God. The world is going its best, trying its best, trying to remove the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And tonight, my friends, a person might confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, yet deny 
deny that he is God as the Bible teaches tonight he is God they are also giving false doctrine because they are not representing a true Jesus this is why when someone says they believe in Jesus you should not automatically believe that they believe in Jesus of the Holy Bible my friends other religions and other beliefs believe in Jesus but the Jesus they believe in is not the Jesus of the Holy Bible yes the Jesus of the Holy Bible my friends is unquestionably God the Jesus of the Holy Bible is God my friends yes the doctrine of Christ is so important I can express the importance of this doctrine tonight the doctrine of Christology is is, is a heaven or hell is Sure, my friends, it's really, it's really is there are some doctrines that divide Christians which are not heaven or hell issues, and that is fine. But what you believe about Jesus Christ matters tonight because Jesus is the door, He is the door, He is the way to God. And if you are following any other Jesus that is not found in these four gospels of Matthew, Luke, Mark, and John tonight. Tonight, you are not following the Bible. You are not following the path to God tonight. John chapter 14 verse 6 tells us, my friend Jesus said unto him, he said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father, no man come unto the Father but by me. There is historical proof tonight, my friends, that Jesus lived on this earth. There is historical proof that he died, and there is historical proof that he rose again. But what the Bible is telling us is that the spirit of the Antichrist will arrive long before the antichrist himself arrives my friends in this in the spirit of the antichrist will try to paint the picture of jesus just as being a good man jesus was not a good man jesus was and is god almighty don't try demoting jesus to being a good man no my friends jesus was and is and not on our level where we can describe him as a good man tonight Jesus Christ is God Almighty he is God Almighty and he said in his words he is not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance and he says come now and let us reason together Save the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, it shall be white as snow, though it be like crimson, it shall be as wool. Tonight, my friends, the choice is yours. Salvation is a free gift for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal, everlasting life. Tonight, my friends, are you saved? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? If you are not saved and your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, I'm sorry for you. You will miss the rapture and left behind. But my desire and my prayer tonight that you will not miss the rapture and left behind. But you will be in the rapture when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound in the mighty name of Jesus. My friends, tonight it has been a great joy and privilege once again to be here this night uh, to minister the word of God I love you in the love of God God bless you richly do have a sweet uh, and wonderful night dress uh, I'll see you tomorrow night uh, by the grace of God in the mighty name of Jesus uh, amen and amen praise God thank you Jesus hallelujah praise God